This is Lugano Lake in August 2023. It's become completely overpowered by a toxic bloom of blue-green algae that I find just beyond comprehension. It's hard to believe that this lake is actually, in of all places, the country of Switzerland. When one thinks of Switzerland, one imagines pristine landscapes, crisp mountain air, glacial peaks, and the purest of meltwater in streams and rivers. This episode will address some of the cultural and ecological history of this lake in its succession from a clear water well-oxygenated, cool, deep, oligotrophic lake to a eutrophic or mesotrophic lake with its original ecosystem and biological communities completely turned upside down. Lugano Lake is a deep glacial lake on the border between Switzerland and northern Italy and situated between Lake Como and Lake Maggiore. The lake shores have been inhabited for thousands of years, with inhabitants attracted by a lucrative fishing industry. The location of the lake was once of strategic importance in access to the north-south trade routes across alpine passes. Roman Empire artifacts can be found throughout the region. The causeway was built across the lake in 1848 and now carries the north-south highway and the Gotthard Railway. This causeway cut off a southern branch of the lake forever, affecting the circulation of water and its subsequent ecology. The lake is popular for swimming and has over 50 public beaches and access points. The lake covers 18.8 square miles, or about 48.7 square kilometers, with a maximum depth of almost 1,000 feet, or 288 plus meters. The lake in the city of Lugano has been a tourist destination for many years, with vacation homes dotting the shoreline along with the ancient fishing villages. So what happened here? How could a lake, even in Switzerland, arrive at this point? The unsightly bloom of blue-green algae or cyanobacteria reduce water visibility to near zero and poison the water to cause bands on swimming or any kind of skin contact with the water. The lake does not always look like this, but such blooms can persist for weeks at a time. When it occurs, Swiss authorities are quick to react and warn both swimmers and dog walkers of risk. These naturally occurring blue-green algae or cyanobacteria respond to certain temperature and nutrient conditions to explode into blooms that can exceed 100,000 cells per millimeter of lake water. At and above this level, ingestion of this water can cause breathing problems, flu-like symptoms, diarrhea, and nausea, with children and dogs being at the highest risk. The southern basin of the lake that is cut off from circulation from the rest of the lake by the artificial causeway is most sensitive. This is where I visit the historic family home that has been in my family for over a century. My mother was born here on this house on this lake. First, I want to emphasize the difference between green algae, which are edible, nutritious algae eaten by zooplankton, fish, and birds, and other wildlife, and inedible blue-green algae, which technically aren't algae at all, but microscopic inedible bacteria that release toxins when in large numbers. When this blue-green algae or blue-green bacteria occurs in large numbers, it's known as blooms. Lugano Lake was once a clear water and oligotrophic lake before pollution arrived in the 60s in the form of nitrates and phosphates from agriculture as well as unprocessed sewage from developments around the lake. By the end of the 70s, the lake became severely eutrophic, with deep water becoming either permanently deoxygenated in the northern basin and seasonally in the southern basin. The surface waters clouded with blue-green algal blooms with devastating consequences, an alteration of the original phytoplankton, zooplankton-dominated ecosystem with a filter-feeding fish called the albarella dominating the base of the food chain. Netted for thousands of years, these albarella are now essentially extinct. Beginning at the end of the 70s, great efforts have been made to reduce the input of nitrates and phosphates that cause this extreme eutrophic of the lake. Effort had particularly focused on the phosphorate input that is usually correlated as the limiting nutrient in aquatic ecosystems. However, despite all the effort, the lake continues to be eutrophic. 
Since the 1970s, the temperature of the surface waters of the lake have increased 0.1 to 0.8 degrees Celsius per decade, creating another trigger to the toxic cyanobacteria blooms. Surprisingly, the phosphate levels have dropped to mesotrophic rather than eutrophic levels. Ironically, it seemed to favor the growth of the inedible blue-green cyanobacteria instead of the edible green algae. The highest levels of inedible cyanobacteria are often associated with the lowest phosphate levels during the summer. It's been concluded that in order to restore this lake to a healthy ecosystem, they're going to need to reduce the phosphorus levels even farther than they expected. We probably need to address the nitrate levels or nitrate input to the lake as well. I have actually witnessed all of these changes in Lugano Lake as I first visited as a three-year-old in 1960. I would stay at the house with my grandmother, returning every summer, and I'm still going there now. Will I see a return to an oligotrophic lake and the return of the ecosystem based on the Alborella again? I hope I will be able to live long enough to see this lake fully restored. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. 